As if they don't have too much on their plates. The Kings of Combat Sports Podcast, John and Wade. They'll talk about the things they did that day. They'll analyze the work of Vince and Triple H. Rewind to SmackDown. 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 And we're live. It's John Pollock. And joining me, I just spin the wheel, make the deal, and it's coming up our man, Neil Flanagan, who is joining me to cap off the week of all weeks. Hello, Neil. Uh, hello, John. I didn't quite know what I was signing up for uh, when you when I was asked to do this. I was I kind of, you know, was hoping maybe we'd get a bit of a chat about Donna Reed's run as Miss Ellie or whatever happened to James Ewing, but uh, overtaken by events, let's just say this week and and right through today, including during SmackDown. Yes, we have we have the latest news to get to. I was going to carve out some Dallas time. That is not going to happen on, on this particular show. That will be the elusive uh, show that uh, Neil and I will do one day. But um, news came down during tonight's edition of SmackDown. An internal email was sent out to staff. Vince McMahon is resigning from WWE. And uh, Neil, you uh, quickly uh, got a, a story up on the site. I guess as you were seeing the dominoes fall, and I will go backwards, um, but I think we should start with uh, the, the the most pressing news now with Vince McMahon's resignation. Sure. Once you started to see the reaction, the coverage, and then today when we're seeing this affecting sponsors, yeah. was this a logical conclusion that you saw this story moving toward, or was the resignation something that you thought, man, will will this guy be able to escape with his position through all of this and they're just going to dig their heels in i was on the fence somewhat about what might happen just knowing um his bloody mindedness and the fact that he thought it was a mistake to step down in 2022 but he's in a vastly different set of circumstances now for all sorts of reasons um first of all when he stood down in in um July 22, if I got that right, it yep. was it was under a cloud, but it was under this kind of amorphous um, allegations of sexual misconduct, that sort of thing, and maybe some stronger language, but nothing remotely like the detail that we've had laid in front of us over the last couple of days. That's that's a been again game changer. Also, of course, he doesn't have the clout that he did in WWE. He doesn't have controlling interest. Uh, in the company, he can't force his way back onto the board. And so very different set of circumstances this time around that, um, you know, if, if you're looking at the, like, this is one where I mean, you look at him, he has certainly had this this Teflon quality about him throughout his entire professional career. This is one that I just I just don't see where you could reasonably see um the heat dying down and that this person would be someone that tko would see of, of that value to go out on, on such a limb for the email that was sent out uh, by nick Khan to the staff on friday evening i wanted to inform you that vince mcmahon has tendered his resignation from his positions as tko executive chairman and on the tko board of directors he will no longer have a role with tko group holdings or wwe and since that time as well, uh, Vince McMahon, he has also sent out a statement to multiple outlets. I first saw it on Deadline. I've seen a few places. ESPN has it. I think The Hollywood Reporter did. Quote, I stand by my prior statement that Ms. Grant's lawsuit is replete with lies, obscene made up instances that never occurred and is a vindictive distortion of the truth. I intend to vigorously defend myself against these baseless accusations and look forward to clearing my name. However, out of respect for the WWE universe, the extraordinary TKO business and its board members and shareholders, partners and constituents, and all of the employees and superstars who helped make WWE into the global leader it is today, I've decided to resign from my executive chairmanship and the TKO board of directors effective immediately. Um, so, I mean, it is clearly in, in such a way that Vince McMahon is positioning himself that he is going to fight this case yes. while at the same time... Um, you know, publicly stepping down. And this sort of emphasizes that I won't go so far as to say conflicting statements that we got on Thursday, but certainly not in concert with one another. What we heard from Vince McMahon, that was essentially what we had just heard from, that he is adamant about his 
innocence and yeah. these are lies while TKO was taking a more measured approach that um, we take these allegate these horrific allegations very seriously and are looking into it and we're you know they they were not stepping up to bat on behalf of Vince oh, no. McMahon and trying to discredit the uh, Janelle Grant they were taking a much more um, the approach of, of taking these allegations very sig much more significantly serious rather than um, a united front that you sure. might and emphasizing that this man is not involved in the day-to-day -day operation. I'm a guy with the title of executive chairman um, is not involved in the day-to-day -day running. Oh, yeah. So they, the, the, this, the disparity between those two statements was, was pretty stark. Um, I think it's delving into the realms of speculation, but I think this is probably a, a lent on um, resignation don't you john i mean obviously the reporting isn't quite there yet but um often these sorts of resignations are not just a unilateral decision out of the goodness of his heart to, for the wwe universe or whatever he says in the second half of that uh, statement doesn't really out of respect i think he says doesn't really chime with what we've learned this week i i would want to know what the um turning point was of wwe that this lawsuit drops Thursday morning and throughout the the day you are seeing, you know, all the horrific reactions. And that's that's very notable when you're when your public has such a disgust uh, towards something like that. But the true pressure points are going to come in the form of the stock in forms of sponsorships. And those were interesting things to watch today because yeah. the stock, if you were monitoring it, Largely unchanged mm -hmm. today. They received a great boost on Tuesday with the Netflix news, and this did not um, this did not scare off in investors. This is not like we saw the stock price affected. So that would have been something in Vince McMahon's favor to at least, uh, if his argument was to ride this out, there wasn't that immediate pressure. Then we get the uh, the first rumblings uh, from uh, at the, it was Russell votes that first had this out about the potential of Slim Jim who is going to be the presenting sponsor of the Royal Rumble. And this is a very big deal with WWE, um, the, the rumors that they would be pulling out. And then I, I reached out and I know a number of outlets reached out and Slim Jim did put out a statement and I'll pull up that uh, exact wording here, stating that Slim Jim values integrity and respect in all of our partnerships, given the recent disturbing allegations against Vince McMahon. At this time, we've decided to pause our promotional activities with WWE, this decision reflects our commitment to our brand values and responsibility to our community. We will continue to monitor the situation and base our future engagements on our values and what's best for our brand. Sean Ross Sapp also chimed in that in addition, um, he had been told that there's another potential major sponsor that was considering working with WWE that is now no longer interested mm -hmm. on top of that. So now you are starting to feel those pressure points, at least ones that we are aware of and what yeah. other issues could be uh, happening behind the scenes of partners and others that are, you know, ju just the, the horrific details of this lawsuit. I mean, who would want to be wrapping their arms around this brand when this is the, this is the cloud over this company at the moment. And, and the dismissal of Vince McMahon is not going to instantly yep. remove this cloud either. I think that from a, I think they will very strategically try to, look at this as the problem is gone, but there is a lot of residue left here. And I think there's a lot of unanswered questions that this company is going to have to answer for because of the widespread nature that these allegations allege and that they're, that the case, I mean, the, the lawyer for Janelle Grant has stated as much, like this was a cultural issue and there's yeah. a reason WWE is listed as defendants here. This is not a singular case. This is not a Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis and the buck stops there. Mm -hmm. There's other issues here that Vince McMahon does not remove just all of the toxicity of this situation. Agreed. And we, we saw um, previously with the um, fabulous Muller, um women's battle royal i think it was it was yep. once called the uh the power of sponsors the snickers um, doctrine is brandon thurston does yes of course and um by the way i think that um absolutely mandatory listening or watching on youtube uh today's pollock and thurston i think that uh, i know the care uh, and the preparation that went in um to that show um 
the sensitivity, the meticulous journalism. I think it's been clearly the most important episode of Pollock and Thurston yet. And um, unless you can't, and I could, I could completely understand this, unless you can't deal with some of the detail mm -hmm. in the complaint, I think it's uh, everybody should listen to that show. But yes, uh, as you mentioned, Brandon, the the um, the stickers doctrine, and here it is in way more serious set of circumstances with um, a current, um, a, you know, with fairly recent events and a guy still around. So who kn who knows what the next set of dominoes would have been? Um, these things can these things can run rather quickly. So money talks. So in the immediate future for TKO, there is now an open board seat that Vince McMahon has vacated, but Vince McMahon still has uh, roughly 11.6 million shares in the company. And that becomes a question that I know has been asked. We will see what the response is. Like, will Vince McMahon be forced to divest? Will he just maintain that stock? That's to be determined. Um, but it, it is not as though he is, as, a, as of now, completely divested from this company, but he does lack a position and a title in, in the company. Um, and then it is going to be the fallout of this, of what continues. The, the suit filed by Janelle Grant, it is a civil suit, but as we ta have talked about, the fact is like there are, there are crimes that are alleged in this as well. Is there something larger at play? We mentioned the potential of like, we know that the grand jury was looking into this last mm -hmm. summer and are they getting their ducks in a row? Like we are talking about the, like human trafficking at, a, at in a massive US based company that, I mean, how widespread that this could have affected, how many people were aware of mm -hmm. this in the, in the company. Are there others involved? We know for a fact that there are multiple women that have signed NDAs. Yep. God knows what the details of like all these women have stories. We have just now been privy to one of them and another being, you know, Rita Chatterton back in when she came forward in 1992. Um, like, uh, again, that's, that's where I look at that. This is like, this is one story we are focused on and we know there are other NDAs and it just, it, it makes you really wonder like how much of a autopsy this company requires. And yes, how deep this goes like this to me is a cultural um like th this does not happen in, in a vacuum with one individual like this permeates throughout when your ringleader is mm -hmm. acting in such a way and believes they are above power beyond reproach or any kind of consequence and today he faced that consequence and had to leave the company for the second time in two years yeah and there's a, there's a whole list of other people that have answer uh, you know answers to give. Um, Lauren Itis himself, I know he's out of the company, but as you say, there's behind the scenes who knows what's happening with the grand jury and so on. But Brock Lesnar, the the media blogger, I think most of us know who that is. Does he have a, some sort of case to answer? The special committee, what what kind of investigation were they running? Where and I know there's I, I believe it was in the New York Times. Yes, uh, that. One of the um, executives did say that they. Um, I'll, I'll pull up the quote while you uh, finish your thought. Yeah, um, and WWE corporate officers numbers one through I think it's four. Yes, the physical therapist, and who knows who else who was in on this but kept their mouths shut. There's, I mean, the the stories from like Vince McMahon, like alone. You look at those texts and. There, there's not executives surviving those texts in, in this position. No. And we're talking about um, that, like on the scale of things in the, in the lawsuit, like it only escalates from there. But what Neil is referring to is that uh, in Thursday's uh, New York Times article, it did have an article from, or sorry, a quote from Jeffrey Speed, who was a former board member of WWE. And in the article, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey Speed is quoted, I remain confident in our investigation, which included outreach to Ms. Grant an engagement with her lawyer. Um, this was in a this was sent in an email on Thursday on behalf of the law firm that was hired to represent the committee. Mr. Speed, who left the WWE board in 2023, added that he recognized the horrific nature of the allegations in the lawsuit, but that he was quote not at liberty to comment on what was and what was not learned during our investigation. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, I, I look at this and like that certainly remains to be determined. Uh, was, was there some kind of outreach? Um, potentially was there contact made? What was, what was done though? Was, yes. were, was she sat down? Did you give her the opportunity to share those horrific allegations that we read about on Thursday? Was it merely a courtesy contact and like to what depth um, are we just playing with words here? If we are maybe, maybe Precisely. not. I mean, it remains to be seen, but my counter to that would be if you were aware this was all found. Um, how strong was this investigation when yeah. if you were all privy to this? And I also st state that with the understanding that at the end of the day, this board of directors was powerless against Vince McMahon. They could not thwart mm -hmm. his power play because of the controlling shares that he maintained to strong arm his way back onto the board. They unanimously voted for him to not come back to the board. So yeah. this investigation, um, whatever you want to give any merit to, or certainly question, which I think is more than fair after this week, is at the end of it, they were powerless to whatever the findings were when Vince McMahon ultimately was able to just demand his seat back at the table and yeah. received it in January of 2023. Yes, um, nothing they could do. And it does feel as though, um, without having seen any um, final report of, su of such investigation, that, um, you know, even if it was a thorough job, as you say, Vince McMahon probably felt, I've got an NDA in place. Um, this isn't going to come out. And thank goodness, by the way, this is a slight tangent for the the speaking out law and the anti-trafficking legislation that allows a lawsuit like this to break the NDAs because I think it's you we're lifting the rock here and seeing the just what the gross reality underneath of what you know people throw around NDA people throw around as I already mentioned sexual misconduct you know affair um, these sorts of kind of clinical sounding terms but the Detail first in the uh, Wall Street Journal story, which just gets worse as you read down to the bottom, and then the actual uh, court filing, all 67 pages of it, is nauseating. And I know that you and I were in touch yesterday and you had mentioned uh, you needed to take a bit of a wellness break from reading it because obviously you're doing your job as a journalist and not just sort of, you know, skimming through it. You're studying it. I did um, largely the same thing and had largely the same reaction. Just it made me feel physically ill and I had to uh, stop for a little while. And then it took a while to sort of shake it, if you know what I mean. Um, for me, the texts were the point at which I kind of thought to myself, he's done this time because text messages can be very easily verified by carriers. You know, the exact time that they were sent can be verified. And if I were wrongly accused of something like this, the very first thing I would do is say that those texts are fabricated. There's been no denial of that. Um, leads me to believe that they're, they, they're, they're genuine. And they by themselves, I, I think, you know, are- They're already for... damning enough. I mean, they make, a, they make references to John Laurinaitis. Like this is not- Yes. Um, it, the, the words are horrific, but they also make reference to action on, on top of it. They like the, the text, I don't think he could survive, much less all uh, all others that are alleged. And as we mentioned, I mean, this was a this was an NDA that was worth uh, three million dollars. She was paid a million at the beginning of the installment plan. And then there were to be five hundred thousand dollar payments made over the course of four years. And it was they were to be February of. 23, 24, 25, 26. So after the uh, Wall Street Journal reporting comes out in the spring of 2022, Vince McMahon believes that this NDA has been violated. Mm -hmm. So February 1st, 2023 does not make this payment anymore. And 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 thus that opens the door for her to believe like this, this NDA is that it's been breached. So, I mean, you look at this from the, the, the state of mind of, okay, this was this was a this was a problem that they believed was $3 million to go away. 
there's another NDA at $7.5 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you, we're horrified by this. And I, I just can't help but know that there, we know that there are other NDAs. And again, all those women, they have their own experiences. And it's, I mean, it's just shocking to think like what we don't know. Yeah. And again, you know, I just want to emphasize it, it is a positive thing to see what is behind an NDA for once. And it's, it's good to know that there are legal avenues. I think there are three laid out by her representation, the non-payment, the, uh, the, the trafficking laws, which allow for an NDA to be revealed. And uh, I think it's called colloquially, at least the speaking out law passed by Congress, which allows an NDA to be, uh, the contents of an NDA to be revealed if there has been sexual assault, which clearly is alleged here. Yes. Um, there's been, you know, uh, so much coverage of this over the last 24 hours. Um, I, I'm curious as well, uh, Neil, where, where you are of the coverage that has made. Has this been something you have seen on local news? Um, just give us a sense of the coverage that this has received through your lens. It's begun to filter through today. I, I, I was scarring sort of um, national and you know, non-sporting, non-wrestling media last night to see how long it would take. But I mean, the BBC have picked this up. I know CBC has, um, ITV, the the larger outlets and, and the major newspapers have this now. And they'll certainly, if they didn't run with it before, they're going to now after the resignation. Um, yeah. So yes, it's getting, it's getting uh, widespread coverage. I was contacted by a, a few outlets. I did do an interview for um, the, the, the national broadcast for Global News here in Canada, and I I did not tune in, so I I'm assuming it ran. It was supposed to run on the uh, the, the 6:30 uh, broadcast here in Canada, uh, but this uh, I, I did the interview, and this was about two hours before the news came down about Vince McMahon's mm -hmm. resignation as well. So I mean, it's you, you have seen a lot of big outlets covering this. And I mean, that is ultimately what gives these stories that 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 oxygen to move through a news cycle. And I guess the part that will now be watched is is Vince McMahon's exit. Does that sort of kind of take that attention away? Um, we do have still a a case that has been filed here. This is yes. still something that there is going to be an, an active case and a legal proceeding to this entire thing. I feel that there are. There will be more that we learn, more coverage of this. Um, but the immediate focus is to Saturday night and how WWE addresses this. We can look at tonight's SmackDown, and certainly you would not have taken any sort of um, audience revolt or anything. Nope. Like you could have tuned in, and I don't think you would have seen any difference in presentation tonight or crowd reaction. And I don't expect anything different for the show portion of the Royal Rumble, but all eyes will be on that press conference after the fact and does Paul Levesque go in front of the media or is this one that he sets out? Yes, that's a big question. Um, I and, sense... and I have asked by the way, WWE, if the press conference is still happening and didn't receive a statement as of tonight. Mm. My, if I had to guess, I'd say it will go ahead. And if I were an ad some sort of media advisor, which I'm not, I would um, advise Paul Levesque to address it before he's asked a single question in, in as much as he can. Um, he's not shied away, at least from Twitter tonight, because he did his, um, he posted a picture with the Kabuki Warriors with the double, double pointing mm -hmm. at the, at the two new champions. So he's not hiding in that sense, at least. Um, but yes, I think it's a, it's a test. Uh, and I was speaking to somebody earlier on today about some of the expectations for the media in uh, tomorrow's press conference. And I, I get I get that not everybody who attends those pre press conferences would even describe themselves as a journalist. Mm -hmm. um, some at best are probably a kind of on the e-television side of things. They're a showbiz report, you know, that kind of, that's what they feel they're covering. And some are just bloggers or whatever. Um, I don't think there's enough people like you or Brandon Thurston at these things, but there are some. And if this is not, you know, if we got just the, you know, 
what what was the gate you know what what does the new champion think you know who's who's next for the new champion or, or that kind of nonsense it would be deeply disappointing and i think very surprising at this point with everything that's gone on it will have to be addressed at some in some way I, I, I'm pretty confident it would be covered in some form or fashion uh, if Paul Levesque is there in, in front of the audience. And again, maybe they, like at most, I could, yeah, I, I really don't know. I don't know what they will do tomorrow. I don't know for sure what they will do with Brock Lesnar tomorrow. I mean, mm -hmm. he was expected to be on the show tomorrow. And do you put him out there? I mean, traditionally... And we have to remember a lot of when I say traditionally, like this is it, like from the Vince McMahon playbook is you dig your heels in and you 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 don't let the real world affect yours mm. and would go forward with it. This is a Paul Levesque call and might be even above him in terms of that that kind of a call. Sure. Like this could be absolutely right at the top that we are not fanning any flames and not not a good night to have Brock Lesnar uh, show up. Um, regardless of what the reaction is, we just not not the play we're we're calling tonight yeah i think it's they make some sort of calculation on how clued in the audience might be and at this point who's you know who's not aware of it um i'm sure there are some people who tuned into smackdown tonight unaware of all of this and just wondered where kevin patrick was or something but um this has become so big anybody who has a social media presence will you know can't fail to have noticed this and of course vince vince being gone and this time for good, I, th I I don't think see any way back for him. Um, is clearly going to filter through to the audience. Lesnar is imp thoroughly implicated in, in in some of this, so who knows? Um, I think you're quite astute in saying you know ign ignore the real world. I think that's something that uh, clearly a, a guy like Vince McMahon has been doing since probably the 1980s in this weird bubble that he has created for himself, where he's. Uh, He's king of all he surveys and everybody answers to him. Um, and I think that speaks to what happened in this case, uh, or what's alleged to have happened. Um, there is one thing I, I wanted to add, John, because in in posting stories uh, for post wrestling, occasionally um, I will see a quote tweet um, or a reply to a link to our stories. Mm -hmm. And I've seen one or two, and I know this is deeply fringe opinion and it is not typical um, of what i've seen but there have been people saying why did she stay with him for so long this was a consensual relationship all this kind of forgive my language fucking nonsense i just wanted to point out something that was legislated for in the uk that has been talked about a bit today on the fringes of this story and it's called um, coercive control. It may have a, a, a another terminology in the States. I know that um, uh, the attorney used the um, term traumatic bonding, I think, but it's largely the same sort of thing. And I just wanted to speak to that a little, which is a definition of what it is. And this is this has been criminalized in the UK um, on its own, it's a criminal offence, never mind what it might involve, which, you know, a sexual assault or, or whatever, which can be prosecuted separately. And coercive control is an act or a pattern of acts, I'm reading this, of assault, threats, humiliation, intimidation or other abuse that is used to harm, punish, control or frighten a victim. And one of the experts in this area who gave testimony to Parliament when this was being legislated for um, likened it to being taken hostage. And he said the victim becomes a captive in an unreal world created by the abuser, entrapped in a world of confusion, contradiction and fear. And that, John, is normally in the case of what you might call normal domestic abuse where the power imbalance is certainly there but is not as writ large as it is here a, a, a young woman who was a full-time carer for her parents her parents die and they die bankrupt leaving her with nothing not even her property someone in a, a state of complete desperation versus a multimillionaire who's used to having his way 
Um, so I, th I think any um, reference to the gifts that she was given or, I mean, that's all part of how this abuse begins. People start off being nice with the hugs and the promises and I'll give you a job and it descends into the sort of thing that is alleged in this case. And I just wanted to put that out there because I have seen very few, but some commentary that, hey, you know, why'd she stay so long? Hey, this was consensual relationship, you know, and it's almost as nauseating as some of the stuff in the lawsuit to read that. Yeah, I mean, I I touched on it a little bit talking with, with Brandon. I think there is a great, um, there's a great hole, I think, in a lot of young men's understanding of consent in, in, in many ways that I don't think is accurately um, taught to, to, to some that, that grow up uh, without the understanding of um, consent versus non-consent. Mm -hmm. And that in situations that the, um, like, just read the circumstances of how this woman got into contact with Vince McMahon, as you mentioned, like she was largely destitute after being a full-time around the clock caregiver for her parents, loses her parents, has no job. And um, on top of it, loses her parents' house in, in a bankruptcy proceeding. She is like completely um, dependent on a lifeline. And here walks in a billionaire that is yeah. the lifeline who's, opening cell is I don't want to give you a job. I want to give you a life. And there was a very clear, um, there was a very clear objective of what Vince McMahon wanted versus what this woman wanted. This woman yeah. just wanted a opportunity at a job and what it came with, um, was, I mean, like this, this was grooming. This was absolutely a woman that became absolutely trapped with this individual and in such a way that could not just simply exit here, like go look at the fully read the, the case. Like it's, it's very tough to do, but if you're going to weigh in on this, you better have read this full thing and how she is trying to exit at the end, trying to break off the relationship mm -hmm. early on and being told no by the most powerful man in, in this company to the end stating when it comes to the NDA, that if you don't sign this, this could really harm you reputationally yes. to, to leave here. Think about yes. that. Th think about yes. somebody of the power of a Vince McMahon uh, telling you that your, your next uh, chapter in life is going to be greatly hindered if you do not sign this, this NDA. This could be very ugly for you. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's a level of that, control that uh, uh, until you've been in this kind of a situation, I don't think you could fully uh, weigh in on, on such a... Um, on, on such a problematic relationship. I agree completely. And, and even before that, the NDA side of things, I think telling her um, he's got the best lawyers in the country on speed dial, you know, it's- Who make problems go away. Yes. I mean, that that tells you very much about a a learned behavior that has existed in a, in a world that does not come with consequences for it. I mean, this is somebody that has mythologized himself as this person that has the US government came after me. I was the victim. Ted That's Turner right. came after me with his checkbook. I was the victim. I'm the victim. I'm the victim. And I've overcome all of this hardship. And at the same time, um, a laundry list of issues that he has come out of unscathed in his professional career. How many companies, Neil, could have gotten out of the, the Titan Gate scandal of the early 90s? Yeah. Like we're, we're talking about like, underage children being mm -hmm. abused uh, under this company banner. And the fact is, you would think you come out of that. Um, and, and yet, this is the culture that we got a glimpse of this week in this 67 page filing a as well. Um, it, it's, it's shocking. And it's not at the same time. I think that's where a lot of people yeah. are in terms of maybe the details are pretty you're you're left aghast at the details. But the the larger structure and what was underneath um 
maybe maybe less stunning to some people that this existed but yes because even before i mean of course it was his complete kingdom before they went public but even after that it still was because he controlled the company and even when he was turfed out he was able to come back and so he had created a culture over decades of this bubble this walled garden um where he is the person on the throne um and you know we shall see what happens I, you know the next steps will be very interesting i think because if he really this is what people who are accused of these things say that they'll defend themselves vigorously and they they intend to fight this all the way and all of that um but my understanding of how this would work is that he would have to submit to hours and hours and hours of um um depositions under oath being quizzed about every detail of what happened on a particular day and um in another oh, sense the, the discovery we, process i mean yeah. we just got a glimpse into some of the evidence and i have no doubt that there is probably a trove of evidence on the on the on the defensive side in in this I agree. the, the and, plaintiff and, side i should say sure and I, I feel that um one thing we know about vince mcmahon is he's, he's, his memory is is absolutely terrible so he probably wouldn't even be able to stick to the lies that he either will make up or somehow in a sick way believes to be true um so i really do wonder whether this will ever see the inside of a courtroom perhaps the wallet will be opened i think that would probably that might be a shame but in who knows um really what i want is the best for the victim in all of this and i think that's what everybody should want and the other victims out there if this opens a door um to others and, the, and you've said larger dollar as you've said larger dollar amounts have been attached to other cases we know nothing about um mm -hmm. so who knows i want to just play this clip just a, a portion of it this was from um uh, janelle grant's lawyer Ann Callis, who was on the Law and Crime Network. So I've just put together a few of her answers. This is about a minute or so in length, and it is a produced piece that has some music underneath it. So don't let that throw you. But uh, this is Ann Callis speaking about the case. This was earlier today. She um, literally felt caged and imprisoned by Vince McMahon. And the degrading, the escalation of the degrading things that happened to her it, it's important for it to come out. These are facts. And these are allegations that we hope to prove to be true. And they are true. Whether they worked in the company or not, yes, the belief is that there uh, are other victims out there. Um, just the way that the grooming of Janelle went on, it just indicates that there are a lot of indicators that there may be and probably are other victims out there. And, and one of Janelle's hopes is that by coming forward, she will give the courage of other victims to come forward too. And you told me that there's something that Janelle wanted you to read on her behalf. She has a statement. Could you tell us what it says? that she hopes any doors of secrecy have been blown off their hinges and that fresh air fills the headquarters. And she hopes those at the company, past and present, who fear speaking out about harm is a thing of the past. She wishes everyone peace. So that was Ann Callis, the lawyer for, uh, the, the lawyer for, um, for, the, for the plaintiff, uh, Janelle Grant and I mean, it's certainly, I mean, this is something that is going to get a, like, this is only step one of this process mm -hmm. of uh, coming forward with this. And, and now it will be um, the Vince McMahon response and the proceeding of this civil case. And if there are other shoes to drop, I think you'd be naive not to have that, that thought of as, as it's plainly laid out there of the potential of other people coming forward. I mean, we, we know of others that have NDAs, um, th this might embolden uh, some as well. I think like it's like it always um, it irks me significantly when um, pe people look at uh, an accuser in this situation and thinks that anyone would welcome this kind of attention yeah. or um, 
like to attach your name and 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 your face that is now plastered all over this story and these horrific details um i i can't fathom i can't i can't fathom being in that uh no. position and i think that this is um you know uh, unfortunately we are in um we have mediums out there where every single person can share every thought no matter how measured it is and what your um instant you know one one blurb synopsis of this story is um that you hope the majority can kind of look at this from a much more uh nuanced way and like the severity of this because it's yeah. it's immense yeah the details are as i said earlier nauseating genuinely physically nauseating um um her attorney said something else about you know basically the state of um Ms. Grant's life at the moment is that she is still on a long path of healing from this. Mm -hmm. She had spent many um, months not being able to leave her home for just in fear, not not attending to her personal grooming. All of the so the idea that that someone would want you know that want to do this for attention or just for money or something like that. It's you know get out of here with that. You know read 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 the, the uh, filing yeah read and those texts and you'll see with the mindset of the man that uh, you're dealing with here i've actually felt a little guilty today john because um i've selected vince mcmahon interviews for past rewind aways because i've always been kind of fascinated with him as a character you know we want to know more about him and you know even chuckle at various things he says and does and to you know having the darkest stuff that you could imagine um that i won't repeat you know some of the, some of the abuse this woman uh endured uh, I, you know i know i have nothing but absolute contempt for him and to be honest a bit of a disinterest tonight in watching smackdown it was kind of very hard to kind of just get back into it after um exposing yourself to all of this detail yeah i i think that for many they're probably in a, a similar kind of viewing headspace uh in, in terms of this like i like there are some times that you know this um you're kind of not looking for that kind of a distraction or exit because this is sort of like it, it's beyond secondary like i i yeah. really was barely following along with uh with smackdown tonight but we are going to do like a short rundown of it and then i i do want to open it up to phone calls so if you do want to uh dial in we are going to do a, a short rundown of smackdown as we speak because uh, a lot of news was coming down so between neil and i we we almost had a pair of eyes on smackdown <laughs> tonight kevin patrick is out michael cole is in on